Well, for one reason, he, he is widely loved. He's an appreciated person. And there is respect for older people in Timorese society. It's a, a cultural characteristic. But, of course, he has the backing of Janana Kuchmao, who is a kingmaker in Timorese politics. And that's really what's going to get him across the line. Is it also to do with displeasure at the current Prime Minister? No, I don't think so. Luola Guterres is, I think, a fairly popular uh, president. The problem is he, his support from Fretilin, uh really means he can only get about 30 or so percent of the vote. He, even with the distribution of small parties uh, supporting different candidates in the runoff, I really would only expect Luolo to get somewhere between 36, 38, maybe 40 percent of the vote. So Porto really will scoop up the rest of the vote and having Shanana's uh, support for that is really what's going to consolidate his position. Mm. What can be expected if Ramos Horta does win? He has talked about pushing for the dissolution of parliament. Will he do that? Yes, that's very likely. That's certainly what Shanana Gushnaya wants and Shanana is as a great backing uh, Jose for the presidency. And Jose has uh, indicated very clearly that there would be an earthquake, a political earthquake, if he's elected. So I think that uh, does indicate that he will move towards dissolving parliament, which is his prerogative as president if he is elected. And that would also bring the electoral cycle back into balance. It was thrown out a few years ago when one of the governments collapsed because Janana essentially pulled support from it. And that threw the electoral cycle out by a year. So if uh, José Ramos Horta does call an election now, a dissolved parliament call an election, it will bring parliament back into the more usual political cycle. Mm -hmm. When you say it could, though, be a, a huge disruption to East Timor politics, what might, that, what might the, the impact be? Well, that's really a, a critical issue, I think. And what we've seen over the years is in the background a dispute between Janana Gushnau and the leader of Fretland, Marielle Kateri. Luola Gutierrez is a Fretland person, so he represents uh, Marielle Kateri. And that dispute between these two old war horses, if you like, is really what's destabilised Timorese politics since independence in 2002. Janana has, by and large, had the upper hand in the political contest. But he has lost it occasionally. He, ha he has made poor decisions. I think last, um, in 2020, he pulled CNRT out of the coalition, uh, the, co the ruling gov uh, coalition government. And that really, I think, was intended to make the government collapse and have new elections called at that time. It shows that Shanana is more keen, I think, on power than on stability. Uh, having said that, Mario Capiri, the head of Fretland, in the past has shown similarly that he wants to be Prime Minister and he's he would prefer to be Prime Minister rather than ha have a stable political environment. So then you've got uh, basically two players that would rather have continuing instability. If elections were called, who do you think would be um, the victor? Well, that's, that's a good question because uh, there are a number of parties in, in Timor Leste's parliament now, and of course we would expect to see that again. Uh, Fretland would expect to get around 30% of the vote, CNRT would get probably 28%. So the rest would go to smaller parties, in particular uh, the current Prime Minister's party, the PLP, Popular Liberation Party. Either Fretland or Janana Gushnaya's CNRT would need to secure the support of PLP to form government. Now, Janana has burned PLP, so they may not be interested in going back to him. That would mean they would go with Fretland and with another small party and form another coalition government. That's good for stability, but it wouldn't give Janana what he wants. He would be angry about that, and he would push Jose Ramos Horta to continue to try to destabilise the parliamentary uh, situation. Mm. And do you think Horta would continue to do that, given he sort of now owes his political um, future, you know, it lies with Guzman? Yes. Well, I think he'll probably uh, move to dissolve parliament in the first instance. 
But if elections return uh, a coalition that doesn't include Chinanovic Mao or his CNRT, then I think Jose Ramos Horta would say, look, I've done what you asked. This is the parliament. This is the government we have. Get on with it. And Janana would then have to uh, essentially go away and lick his wounds. It, it may be that Janana has fired his last bolt with this whole process. If he doesn't form, if there are elections and he can't form a majority in parliament, which I'm guessing would be the case, then that may be the end of his political career. He'll still be a charismatic figure. He'll still be important in his own right. But his capacity to dominate Parliament may have passed from his grip. Yeah. You know, and it's so disappointing. You've been a watcher of this nation for so many years. It's disappointing that the politics in the end of these two significant players is, is not necessarily helping the progress of the nation. No. Look, I think back in 2007 when uh, Shanana Gishnau became Prime Minister after being President for five years, that there was a period of stability and a period of healing after the turmoil of 2006. But since then, he hasn't always been a stable character, or he hasn't been a character who's encouraged political stability. It's really been about his way or no way. Uh, and I think that's particularly important when you look at his pet project, the Tasimane uh, LNG, Liquid Natural Gas Processing Facility on the South Coast, which is supposed to be linked to the Greater Sunrise uh, oil and gas field in the Timor Sea. Now, that has already soaked up a couple of billion dollars, which Timor Leste can't afford to spend. It looks very much like a white elephant. And if Shinana Gushnau does gain power again, he will almost certainly want to pursue that pet project. And I, I'm not sure that's a good thing for the country. Mm. Good to talk as always, Damien. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beverly.